We are going to do a little tutorial about creating a list of, um, of items in touch and doing it using a script. And uh, what I mean by a list is specifically a table with a bunch of rows in it, each row having a slightly different text. And um, it's, it seems like it can happen uh, every once in a while when, for example, you want to create a series of replicators rep or a series of replicated buttons or other things um, that you may need a whole list of, of things in different rows that all have incrementing numbers. So let's look at a way of, of doing that um, using Python in touch. So I'm going to create a table and that is going to be what I will try to populate. And then I'm going to create a little text dat that is where I'm going to put my script. And to do this script, I'm just going to introduce a couple of variables. So my first variable is going to be, let's say, t, or let's say, o is going to be uh, op table one. And that is pointing towards the table that I want to fill. And then let's say that the text that I want to put in there is going to be, uh, let's say, uh, take. And then, um, Let's say that the um, that I need to increment this uh, this take every row. I want it to be take one, take two, take three, take four, take five, etc., etc., etc. So I'm just going to create a um, a variable for a, a, a number, and I'm using i because i is sort of the common variable that you use in uh, in a loop. And we're going to use a while loop uh, now that we have our variables, and we're going to say while i is smaller than 30, which is the number that let's say we'll use in this case. We want to do 30, 30 rows, um, and we need to put a semicolon and <clears throat> indent this. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is that i is going to have a 1 added to it for each time the script runs. And then the real sort of magic of adding information to a row and, and creating the row is using this little method here which is append row and then we need to say what do we want in that row well we know we want the text and the text is t right and then we know we want the number uh, which is i so i'm just going to show you that this is actually not going to work um, and we get a little error here and um, there are a couple of things that are not right in this um, in the script. So let's kind of make a couple of changes immediately. The first thing that we're going to do is that, well, we know that i is a number, but in this case I'm trying to use it as text. So it needs to be declared as text, which means that it needs a little str. And now let's see if that will make touch happy. And no, it doesn't. And then t is supposed to be text. So let's make sure that we put quotes around it so that it is identified as text. And that immediately works. And um, a couple of things to notice is that, first of all, yes, OK, I have created um, 30 individual lines, but I also have this empty zero. And so let's look at why that's happening. i is equal to zero, right? So we feel like because of that, the first row that should be filled is, is row zero. However, the first thing we're doing in this loop is actually adding one before even appending anything. So every time the loop runs, it adds one, but in the first time it runs, it's already adding one. So if we were to change the order of this and put this here after the uh, append, um, we would probably start at zero. But I might need to clear my table first. And this is an interesting thing to see is that once you've declared the table, you can use this little function to actually empty it. And that does it. So basically what we do is we start at zero we had to reset the table, and this is something that's important to do when you're when you're writing scripts. Is that if you keep adding stuff, 
in certain cases, you'll sort of get really messy results because you're going to keep adding and adding and adding. And sometimes you just want to clear the table that you're writing to. So um, essentially what we've done is that we've created a variable for this operator, we've created a variable for text, and we've made sure that it had quotes so that Touch knows that this is actually text and not some kind of other um, uh, data type that it doesn't understand. And then we declare i is 0, and then we create this loop, and inside the loop we use the append row, and we put this i equal i plus 1, which is really what's uh, making the loop go on, uh, after the append row so that we start at row 0. And you'll see that what that does is that we actually have 29 being the last number, but that's because 0 is the first one. So that's something just to be aware of. Now, there, there's one thing that we can do here immediately to improve this, is that we have the numbers, we have taken and, and zero, and there's no space. So we can add a space by doing, just adding quotes, space bar, putting another quotes, and then running the script again. And then automatically we are going to have some space. So um, that is all good and well, but let's say that you do this once and then you kind of forget how to do it, or that every time you want to do this, you don't want to have to rewrite your script. So let's take a more procedural approach and let's look at this little um, dat here that I've created already, and it's called variables. Um, and I created two rows, one for amount and one for text, and I put the number 30 here and I put the text here, but I, why don't I just change this to take. And so what I'm going to do now is that I am going to change this, the, 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 thing, the variables in here to actually be pointing to um, a, uh, uh, a, 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 a value, a cell inside of the dat. Sorry for all those hesitations there. I was losing my train of thought for a second. So wait, I stay zero, so T is no longer take, but it is, um, well, actually it is, uh, um, you know what, we, well, let's just do op um, variables, and then it's going to be row one, column one. So that is actually going to uh, expand as um, take. Right, and so now if we change this, if we run this again, um, we're gonna probably run into an error, which is that this is probably not being considered as text. So let's try this. If this, oops, let's try adding here the, um, and there we go, oops. So I guess I didn't need that, I thought I did. But I guess I do not. So, um, so that works. So now we can actually change this text to um, whatever. And we can run the script and it's going to change the text. Now, same thing with the number. Let's say that now we have this arbitrary number of 30, but let's say that we wanted it to be something completely different. So why don't we just create a variable for uh, amount, and we just say that that is going to be op um, variables, and that's going to be row zero, column one, and then this is amount, and let's run this again, and uh, let's change the text just so that we can confirm that this is actually doing something and it works. You can now wrap this into something that can be reused. And how would you do that? So let's, this is, we're inside of a container, are we not? No, we're not inside of a container, so I'm going to create a container. Um, let's make a container, and let's just copy all this stuff here. Let's put it in here. And let's say that this is the output of this container. So. Uh, Let's put an out, right? And so that means that now this container, let's delete all this stuff because we don't need it anymore. Let's say that this container is going to produce the result. So if you had a null come out of here, this would be your table. 
And now, let's say that you wanted to share this with other people who maybe are not familiar too much with scripting and you just wanted to give them a quick tool that says, hey, or change these numbers and change this text and whatever, and this will give you your list. So um, what you would like to do is to be able to immediately change those values right in here and not have to dive in and go to the variables, dat, and blah, blah, blah. Let's just save ourselves some clicks. So um, what you want to do is in the common tab of the container op, you want to change it to operator viewer. And um, you don't want it to be looking at out1 because out1 is a static top. It's something that um, is basically what's coming out here. You want it to be looking at variables. And immediately you can see that you have your variables data appear here. And now you could go and you could um, change this text to something else. Now the only issue is that as of now, you'd have to go in here and run this script. But you could create yourself a little button that would uh, automatically run the scripts without you uh, having to dive into there. So um, I think that and we've covered that in a different tutorial, so I, I won't do that now, and it could be an interesting challenge. But this is already a great way to um, encapsulate a little list creation tool that you can then uh, share around your office or your friends. All right, thank you very much.